creating live podcast. Ooh, I have a little live. Ooh. Thank you. The room is now locked. Oh, no one can come in now. Uh oh. <laughs> um, is it being created? We don't know. Okay. Well, we'll just go. Okay. <laughs> hey, everyone. We don't know we're being recorded, but we hope we are. <laughs> Um, I'm Emery and Rich, and I'm here to interview the wonderful, the talented, the fabulous, the unique, the <laughs> <That's true. laughs> the um, my best friend. No, <laughs> okay, I went a little bit weird there. I'm fangirling too much, but Lauren, really, you are a really good friend of mine, and you're here today to talk about you, not me. Um, <laughs> so, uh, welcome. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Um, so we're talking here uh, at HowCon, which is the horror writer, uh, horror, I don't even know how to say my own con, horroraddicts.net <laughs> online writers convention. <laughs> and so yay. we're here to talk about, yay, we're here to talk about your books and everything. Uh, so if, if people don't know about you, which I can't even imagine about that, but if people don't know about you, um, can you tell them a little bit about you? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. Um, I uh, I started out as an editor, editing for Tomatism Press, and I did a couple of nonfiction books way back in the misty days of the 90s, which then led to editing Morbid Curiosity magazine, Yay! which led to, yeah, putting a book together for um, uh, Scribner called Morbid Curiosity Cures the Blues. Yay. There it is. Yay. And um, <laughs> and then since then, I've been writing fiction and nonfiction and continuing to edit and doing all kinds of things. Uh, I've got a nonfiction guide called 199 Cemeteries to See Before You Die. And uh, last year I had the second book of my succubus and angel romance, paranormal, horror kind of genre, bendy thing. Um, <laughs> bendy thing. I love that. Yeah, I love yeah, that. It's a bendy it's thing. Great. What's your book about? Well, it's a bendy thing. <laughs> it's a bendy thing. It came out in... March last year, and then in uh, September, I had a short story collection called Unsafe Wards, which is, everything's kind of dark, but it kind of roams from horror to dark fantasy to science fiction, and you know, you know you've got chocolate on my peanut butter, I got, you know, it's, it's a blend, <laughs> everything's a blend, so. Awesome. I think genre definitions are for wimps, so. Yeah, yeah, and I think it's cool when an author can write lots of different things and people don't care. They're just like, just give me something to read. <laughs> if it sways a little bit sci-fi or whatever, who cares? It's cool. <laughs> yeah, I've been I've been really pleased with the reviews because people have not seemed to stress too much. You know, when I was, I was putting the collection together, I was afraid that people would say, no, oh, this isn't horror <laughs> enough. But, you know, everything's kind of dark, so it awesome. all works out. Awesome. And um, let's see. So I, I found out about you. Well, actually, I knew about uh, about you um, from Morbid Curiosity, but I didn't really remember your name. I just remembered that I love this magazine or zine. Um, I had picked a couple up at Tower. No, goodbye, Tower. No longer. Um, <laughs> in the 90s. And I was actually running my own zine, which was way less cool than yours oh. uh, <laughs> we all had a zine in the 90s didn't we yours was cool and I remember reading the um article about and I'm always going to say this wrong but the Sedlak ossuary I think it is and I remember just reading that, that article and it just stuck with me and the pictures and the book and everything and I just loved the book overall but that was my favorite article and then I remember re meeting you and you're I was just like oh cool a new horror writer friend that's cool and then you mentioned that you um did that book and I was like what like <laughs> <laughs> you're freaking kidding me and then I was like well my favorite article from that book is you know and you're like yeah I wrote that I was like what ah, bad girl you know <laughs> 
but I'm happy that I got to know you before I knew that because I probably would have been a little bit um, intimidated to like get to know you <laughs> <laughs> and stuff if I knew that um, because I'd have been like, oh my God, I love that and it's so good and you know, uh, I can't really talk to her. She's not a real person. She's this idol, you know. <laughs> yeah. I'm like the least intimidating person you will ever meet. <laughs> I don't know about that. Even though we're friends, yeah. you still intimidate me a little bit as far as your creativity and your like talent and going on and on. But um <laughs> but we did something this year together which was really cool, the spooky writers planner. Yeah. And I love it. You know if I have one right here. I, I, I'm like, like, wait a minute, where yeah. are mine too? <laughs> yeah, of course, we've been pimping it so much that it's all over our house, but it's just not at our well, desk, right? <laughs> mine, mine is a printout, so it's, it's buried under stuff because oh. I was working this morning. But um, I could show you all my my sticky notes Ooh, that, my tape. Cool. All my so cool. stuff falling out. That is so cool. More stuff on the outside. So yeah, I love I, that. <laughs> I, that has it's honestly changed my life. It's so nice to just sit down and say, "All right, what am I doing today?" and not have to worry about what am I doing <laughs> tomorrow and what am I doing the day after that. I just okay, today's stuff is this. Just fuss on this and. It has been really huge. So, yes, I'm happy to pimp that everywhere. <laughs> and it actually, um, it it's actually cool because we put in everything we wanted. <laughs> so we're very selfish in that way, that way, like everything that we thought would be cool to have in the book, that's what we put in. But well, And it came together so fast that I keep, I'm like, wait, now I need to, I need a place to write down when magazines are open for submissions. Oh, cool. We thought of that. It's already in the book. You know, it's, it's been so, it's been so useful. So I hope other people yeah. are enjoying it as much. I think they are. I, I get emails and stuff and, and uh, uh, Instagram shots and Facebook messages saying, I got my pattern out. I'm doing my thing. So I hope it has been too. Uh, one of my favorite things in the book and, um, you know, it was something that I had, but it was like written on a page. I can show you it. It's like so messy, but like I had to like cut out, um, paint, <laughs> I like a printout and then I like cut it out and put it in a journal, but it's basically my submissions that I've submitted to places and when they're coming back. So I found that so helpful for myself and then we put it in the back of the book. So now it's in your planner. I don't have to go find this great right. book. Well, you know, I, I <laughs> would end up with, I'd have, you know, 16 notebooks. I'd have the submissions notebook and the ideas to write about notebook and, you know, my calendar and, and just all this stuff. And so now yeah. it's all in one yeah. place. <sighs> yeah. That's huge. It's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> it takes the, it takes the um, pressure off a little. <laughs> yeah. It's but, been fun. I, I, I write with this group of people on Mondays and a whole bunch of them bought the planner. So we had this, you know, we're on zoom and everybody's got their little window and everything. And then somebody said one day, Oh, my planner came. And then everybody was like, and I got mine and I got mine. It was like being Spartacus, you know, everybody was like, up the planner. so, so I hope, I hope people are, are finding it useful. You know, it's just one of those things that I wanted for yeah. me. And I didn't really think about how other people would use it. And now I'm like, oh, are you using it? What do you find useful? So, Yeah, exactly. I think it's cool, too. And, I, you know, I keep getting people saying, oh, you know, I, I was going to use it. I, I, I wanted to use it starting this month, but it wasn't quite ready. So I started it in February. So now I got February to February. I'm like, okay. Well, actually, it's February to March because it's 13 months. Mm -hmm. So now they have... You could start any time during the year if you get inspired. It's it it's like totally open. It's so cool. Okay, but enough about the planner because that's about you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about you. <laughs> oh, all right. So I don't want to just do like a normal interview where people ask you what inspires you and uh, you know that kind of stuff. So I thought up some questions and hopefully they're not okay. too hard. Well, let me let me warn you. 
I did an interview last year where she did the um, Inside the Actor's Studio questionnaire, uh -huh. you know, uh -huh. that asks, like, what your favorite first word was, and, and I told her, so I'm not sure Facebook would let me get away with that, so don't <laughs> ask me that question. <laughs> okay, no, I won't. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, it, we we better keep it like PG or else they'll mark us and put us in the. Wait, we don't want to be in Facebook jail. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I was wondering because you know we all start as writers somewhere, um, little kids or whatever we are, <laughs> teenagers or young adults. Even if you if you start a little bit later than that, um, what was the first story you wrote? Like just whatever pops into your head. The first story I wrote, I don't know. <laughs> I, I honestly don't know. Um, <laughs> did you start writing when you were a kid or did you? I told myself stories for a really long time, but it took me a while to realize that, that you know, books were written by people. I don't know where <laughs> they, I thought they came from before that, but um, I've met a bunch of girls in junior high that were writing fanfic. Oh. And so those might be the first time I actually wrote things down. Okay. But the first, I can tell you the first story I got published. It was a, a Lovecraft, Lovecraft pastiche about a cabin in the woods, you know, as you do. So, cool. Yeah. Okay. okay. So are you too embarrassed to tell us what your fanfic was about? <laughs> the Beatles. Cause you know, and Kiss, because there was a movie on TV at one point about, um, yeah, well, you know, there was a movie about the members of the band Kiss as, like, superheroes. Oh, really? I cannot tell you anything more about it than that. But, you know, they were, like, in costume, and they had magic powers, and they did stuff. And I thought that was really cool. So I wrote <laughs> stories about them. Not that I know anything about the members of Kiss other than their names and they wore makeup, but you know, they played their songs at the school dances, I guess was the draw that I don't know, but, um, that is cool. Yeah. So that was, that was where it Okay. Started. Well, it wasn't super embarrassing. It, I mean, yeah, Beatles. It's embarrassing it's, enough. Okay. That's a little, yeah. you know, rock, you know, it's yeah, not, yeah. you know, and you know, Black, Beatles are classic. So no, no shame in that oh, at all. Right. You know, if you said like, well, you know, is, girls. Like, no, 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 it's because <laughs> I'm old, but, you know, goth hadn't been invented yet when I started writing, so I couldn't write about anybody cool. Okay, well, those, those they're not too embarrassing. I'm not feeling right. sorry for you right now. All right, <laughs> All right. Um, what, tell me what you thought. Well, you didn't know that books were created by people, but after you figured that out and figured that there were authors that, you know, create these things and they get transferred to the whole world um what did you think author life would be like like what was the image was it like the tv image where like oh they're rolling in money and they tell their butler to take them to town and <laughs> all that kind of stuff no well, you know i assumed that i would like move to new york and i'd, I'd have a little apartment you know because that's where writers live right every right. all writers lived in new york yeah and and I, you know, have a little desk with my typewriter because nobody had right. invented computers yet. And, you know, I'd sit and I'd look at the river and I'd write stories. And, um, yeah, I had, you know, now I'm in San Francisco, so I'm as far from New York as I could get. And I don't have a view of the water. I don't know. What does an apartment in New York City cost with a yeah. view of the water? I mean, yeah. <laughs> like a writer could afford that. Right. Right. But yeah, no, I, I know what you mean. I love these people that that are like, you know, writing their books and they're in this enormous loft and yeah. they have, you know, yeah. artwork on the walls and the furniture and yeah, it's wonderful. That's gonna I'm be... like, I'm like, I've seen the places where real writers and artists can actually afford in New York. You know, I mean, I haven't actually been there, but I, I've seen pictures and I'm like, okay, this is so far from whenever you see a movie, the apartment is huge. They've got all this space. They've got, you know, windows out looking, everything beautiful. Even if they're supposed to be poor, they're in like a street with like the tree line and the little mm -hmm. walk ups. And stuff. <laughs> It's so beautiful right. and have like huge areas to do whatever they want. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, because that's the way people live. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I, I'd probably be one of those people with a bathtub in the kitchen. <laughs> 16 roommates. And... <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. Um, I, I think that it would be lucky to get like anything there that mm -hmm. would be like, even like maybe your bed could like fold up so that your desk could be there. <laughs> it's like yeah. they're really tiny. Yeah. Um, okay. So what would you write if money and life and nothing was your barrier? So it, you, you could write whatever you wanted no worry about mortgage, no worry about um, what would sell, no worry about, you know, getting actual money for your, <laughs> for your deeds. Um, what would you write if you could write anything? Pretty much what I'm doing now, I guess. I, I, you know, I, I don't, I don't worry too much about if somebody's going to like it or, you know, who the market, you know, clearly I don't worry about who the market's going to be because I, you know, I wrote a cemetery book and then a space opera trilogy and then another cemetery book and then a couple of books about a succubus and an angel. And, you know, it's possible that the same person reads all those books, but I, I don't expect it. Um, I've been, I was thinking about this a lot because when I was much, much younger, I met Jim Thurwell, who was, uh, he had a band in the 90s that was you know hardcore industrial stuff and um and i really liked the first couple of albums and they i thought they were really clever and the, you know the way he used the music was really clever and everything and then along about the third or fourth album it got really heavy and i thought it was kind of misogynist and i i didn't care for it as much so i i met him anyway and and I had the nerve to like say to him, wow, I don't like your new stuff as much as I like your old stuff. And everybody else took a big step back. Like, how could you say that to this guy who is a genius? You know, I, I admitted like he's a genius. But he was like, yeah, it's fine. I'm not really making it for you. And, and I thought, wow, that is just so refreshing. He wasn't clearly yeah. wasn't making it for me. Right. But, you know that he's just going to do what he wants to do and not worry about how people like it or don't like it or whatever. And so that's kind of how I am. It's like, you know, I pursue what I want to write and hopefully people will dig it, you know, but I, I don't, I'm not offended if they don't. Right. You know, if it were, if I let other people pick what I was doing, I would still be publishing Morbid Curiosity because... Please people loved it Love and they it. were really sad <laughs> yeah they were really sad when it went away and and that's cool that's what you want I mean you don't want to publish something and have people go oh thank god you're not doing that anymore but, um, <laughs> you know, I just, oh my god yeah good thing I didn't say that when I first met yeah. you you did yeah, what exactly. oh. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> no, you know, that would be valid too but you know just um yeah you have to, life is short Right. And if you wait around to get around to writing what you want to write, you know, you could catch COVID. So, so fuck, excuse me. <laughs> so, so never mind that. Thanks, but God's, uh, we did not out. say that word. You were going to say fun. You no. Know, yeah. You were going to say fun. Right, 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 right. That's what I was going to say. So yeah. fun to yeah. you. <laughs> Too many right. interviews with like pirate radio. Yeah. Well, yeah, we don't really worry about that too much on horatics.net, but all right. Um, so this is the first thing that pops into your head. I don't care if it's like the goofiest answer or whatever, but just whatever comes to your head. You know those moments when you're reading a book and like you're in bed or whatever, and like something happens and you're like and you're like, okay, covering up and, you know, like checking the closet and stuff. Mm -hmm. Can you remember a time when you were reading a book and that happened? Like the first one that comes to mind, what was the book? And if you can tell us, if you remember the author. The one that scarred me in high school oh, was reading um, The Honey Ooh, and Hell uh, House by uh, Shirley Jackson. And that bit where, uh, I can't even remember the character's name but she wakes up and she's like whose hand was i holding Ooh. under the covers oh my god i slept with the lights on that night that was the first time 
I was reading a book and I had to just, I had to keep reading because I had to know what happened. I just could not, every time I closed the book, what I imagined was so much worse that I was like, no, I'm just going to keep, keep going. So I was up all night reading that book. That is awesome. Awesome. I love nights like that. I love, um, it's kind of scary, but it's like also kind of what, you know, thrills us and drives us. Cause we know we're scared to the hell with what happened, but at the same time, you know, it's not going to actually hurt you. It's just <laughs> you a hope. book, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, I think mine was Poppy Z. Bright. I think it's called Drawing mm -hmm. Blood. It was a um, time when she, um, the character, and yeah, I don't remember the character names either, but they were like inside of a dream and um, the abusive father was running, coming after them. And I was like, like ah, you know, like, like freaking out. Okay. You know, put the covers up as far as I could, or maybe over my head, I can't remember. And then just keep reading to hope that, you know, somehow this person who can't be defeated in a dream, but yet's coming after you and you can't get out of the dream mm -hmm. is going to somehow vanish or you're going to conquer them or something. Cause you got to know that last step. It's kind of like the end of sleeping with the enemy. It's like, you got to know that she's going to kill the dude so that he doesn't mm -hmm. haunt her anymore. You know? It's like, you got to know that that, you know, danger yeah. is gone. <laughs> All right. So this is a kind of harder one because when you think about horror landscapes of novels, it's like you like a lot of them, but would you ever actually want to be in the situation or in the atmosphere that the people are going through? So this one is, if you could step into any horror book world, what would it be? Shauna McGuire has a, a series of world fantasies and they're, I don't know if they're YA, whatever, they're, they're designed for kids. Um, but one of them is called Down Among the Sticks and Bones. And it's set in this kind of universal horror, black and white mm -hmm. world where, you know, there's a vampire in the castle on the hill. And then there's also a, a mad scientist in the windmill who's like building bodies out of the dead and stuff like that. And if I could live anywhere in a horror book, I would live in that. Cause I just, I grew up on the horror, the, the universal horror movies on Saturday afternoons. And I think that would be so cool. I mean, yeah. And I know all the precautions, right? You got to wear the yeah. crucifix or have the holy water and, you know, not be out roaming the moors after yeah. dark and stuff like that. But um, yeah. Yeah, I just I think that is so cool. I'm so bummed that somebody stole that idea before <laughs> I could write a book there. Uh, have you, that, <laughs> Yeah, you know, whatever. She's a genius, yeah. so I just have to let her have it. But um, <laughs> yeah, I, if I could live anywhere, I think that would be it. That would be cool. That would be cool. And you don't actually have to be the mortal in the world. I mean, when I asked that question, you know, you could be the, you know, witch in the little cabin, you know, I mean, you could be whatever that you want be to be in that world. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. Um, now this is going to be a hard one. Well, maybe not so hard. Um, okay. And it's hard also to like be um, like super praising your own work. Okay. I know it. <laughs> uh -oh. It's like hard to say, oh yeah, this is awesome. You know, because in front of people, because at home you're like, oh God, this is awesome. Okay. Let's get it published. You know? Uh, but I want to know what you think is the best thing you ever wrote. Jeez. <laughs> oh man. I know it's tough. Yeah, sure, maybe. <laughs> Give the questions to me in advance so I could like think about it. I know. No, no, no fair. <laughs> the best thing I ever wrote. Or one of the best. Just whatever one pops the, into your head. Which one, one of the do you best. Like the best? Right. I can say the the first story in Unsafe Words I am really proud of. It's a it's called Here There Be Monsters. And it's about a, a girl and her boyfriend go up on Mount Tam and drop acid. And then he's killed by a mountain lion and eaten wow. in front of her. And then she sees ghosts. And um, I think I, I nailed the atmosphere in that one. Cause you know, people, I grew up in the country. So for me, 
I have a healthy respect for wilderness, right? Because I know there are creatures in it and, and not necessarily just, you know, fluffy bunnies and, and, and you know, bloodthirsty mosquitoes and stuff like that. But, you know, there are critters in the woods. And so um, I was amazed when I came to California and like a friend and I went up to Tahoe and he's like hiking around in the glaciers in shorts because he's from LA and what does he know about <laughs> snow? And, you know, people, people don't realize that, you know, within a two hour drive, you can get out in the middle of nowhere and they treat it like it's, you know, some safe Walt Disney <laughs> landscape. And, you know, there are mountain lions and coyotes, you know, lately, she's on the news, a coyote, the same coyote has now bitten four people and it, <laughs> ran through a neighborhood and like snatched this little girl who was out walking with her mom and was carrying her away when the mom was like throwing things out of her purse, trying to scare the, the coyote into dropping it, you know, so I have a healthy respect for that stuff. Yeah. And Mount Tam is wild country. I mean, in the last hundred years, there were bears on Mount Tam I mean, there aren't bears anymore, but there are mountain lions and bobcats and all kinds of critters. So yeah, I'm really pleased with that story. That was That's, a long way to get around to answer your question. Sounds a like a really good story, though. Creepy. Yeah, well, definitely. I, I went to a, a writer's retreat on Mount Town, and, um, and the place we stayed was haunted. And, and, you know, that was like the whole draw of the retreat. But um, one of the things the caretaker said at one point just inspired the whole story because uh, – Somebody asking, you know, aren't you afraid of the ghosts in the house? Doesn't it creep you out that this place is so haunted? And he said, no, what's, what's scary to him is the things in the woods. And I was like, oh, what's in the woods? That's what I'm going to write about. So, yeah, After I'm, dark, no one will hear you. No one will come. Well, like <laughs> that's, you are, it's, it's wild up there. I mean, it's there are houses, but that you know anything could be roaming back and forth between yeah. them. and uh, out on the uh, property somebody had come by and made up medicine bundles and they were on some of the trees and so I, I still don't know what they were keeping out or keeping in but you know somebody had done something to mm. to set some boundaries in the land so I was like yeah I need to write about this <laughs> yeah definitely yeah, I I kind of have a healthy respect for woods too. I mean, you know, grew up growing up in Alaska, and we had like a couple acres behind us that were just like woods with like that spongy permafrost floor, you know. Mm -hmm. And there were like weird things out there too, like abandoned buildings. Like there was like this one state we we used to play on it, a stage kind of with a wall. Like what was there, we don't know. Years ago, an old like 1970s car that like was deep in the permafrost like you would never get it out and like the visor had like little pictures yep. in it and stuff it was like we wow. used to like you know we used to like do that but um there were moose out there and you know whatever else and we lived near a um jail and one night one of the guys you know broke out mm -hmm. and it was halloween and me and my friends are trying to go trick-or-treating <laughs> and those houses you know they're not like california nobody in california understands this there's like a house and then like two blocks of woods and then a house you know so mm -hmm. between the houses we were like clutching each other holding flashlight you know freaking out brandy mm -hmm. i wonder if brandy remembers that um but yeah creepy stuff in the woods either deranged strange people or <laughs> or yeah. animals or well that's you know. know people don't realize how big uh, mooses are oh yeah you see one and yes. it's like nine feet tall you know <laughs> <laughs> i remember one time i was standing for, out for the bus and you know my house was probably you know a block away or whatever um and my mom's like and i just slightly turn this way and there's this moose and he's like you know and this steam all comes on my face and I'm like you know freaking out and she kind of looked at me and then she just like walked out I was like 
mm-hmm. got <laughs> freaky, you know, they're, yeah. they're huge animals with like a lot of power. Uh, you know, yeah. you don't realize that you just see it on Northern exposure, walking along and being friendly, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not so much. <laughs> not so much. <laughs> All right. Well, I have a couple more questions. These okay. ones are silly fun ones. Okay. though. They're not, they don't have to do with your writing. So it's, would you rather? Okay. okay? <laughs> All right. So would you rather be one of Dracula's brides or be captured by the creature of the Black Lagoon? Oh, definitely. Which, which... Definitely Dracula's Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Those women are cool. Yeah, they want to hang out are. with them. Yeah. They really are. I mean, you could see it as like, um, you know, these slave women. But I kind of feel like they have more power than you know they're showing you know yeah. they are also vampires so you know what are what are they getting up to while dracula's away you know <laughs> yeah exactly definitely all right that was too easy um <laughs> <laughs> that was <Okay>. too easy <laughs> okay this one is would you rather be a werewolf werewolf woman wolf woman wolf woman werewolf woman yeah, werewolf woman. Okay. <laughs> One time a month for three days, or turn into the fly every three months. Ew. No. <laughs> no, I'd rather be a werewolf woman. Okay. Okay. See, these are too easy for you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You're assuming that I haven't already right, this right. You through, so already know all these answers. Yeah. <laughs> They've already occurred to you. <laughs> I shouldn't know. All right, this one is kind of about writing, and I know what your answer is going to be, but we'll just go with it. Um, would you rather be a best-selling author with no respect from the readers, just their money, or be a bottomless <laughs> author? <laughs> be a bottomless author who was deeply respected. I had a, a writing teacher at one point tell me that I could continue to write the stuff that I was writing at the time. But I was never going to be Ray Bradbury, which is who I thought I wanted to grow up to be. And, but then he, he backed that up and he said, but, you know, you could be maybe J.G. Ballard. And I thought, well, that would fucking rock. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, J.G. Ballard, I'd, I'd be happy to be respected ah. and, you know, have, have my books better known by reputation than read that that would be fine i mean ideally i want people to read my books but right. i don't care about money and all that stuff yeah so money is nice it, you know it has uses but that's not the right. goal yeah i always wondered if i would really want my books taught in classrooms like am i saying a message that is really that important for their lives you know to be taught in a classroom you know <laughs> like do i want that or do i want them to be entertained by mm-hmm. them and i think the answer is entertained by them you know the goal is to do both say something important and be entertaining um but i think in at least in our literary world right now there's the entertainment factor and there's the you've done something great for your country and for man you know <laughs> it kind of feels like there can't be both yeah, even though there are both. writers out there that do right. both um yeah. but they're not respected in the literary world because it's science fiction or you know whatever it is that is keeping them from that so yeah i would i would rather be respected also i don't know <laughs> i mean the money it's appealing in 2020 in 2021 the beginning of 2021 when we're all locked in our houses and we can't afford to go you know it might be nice to be able to own your own private island you know <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah uh, i'm willing to explore it right I, i'm willing <laughs> yeah <laughs> but you know in reality how long would that be fun you know and how long would you spend trying to get the respect back you know, I mean, we've seen authors be very successful in their careers, get lots of money, but then lose the respect of, you know, everyone. And how lonely is that life? And how, how, how hard is it to get back up into the, you know, realm of like, okay, well, everybody likes you now. It, it doesn't usually happen. It's very yeah. rare. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. Would you rather... 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> be abandoned in the stormy wilds of the UK castle country. Like, you may find a castle somewhere. Um, but it's stormy and cold and rainy and all that. Or be abandoned in the sweltering heat of, like, tropical jungles. You could still find a village, but it's really hot and sweltering. No, I'd rather – I'd go for the, the rain and the castles. Me too. <laughs> I guess these aren't too hard. I think it's like, what would I rather be? And then what would someone else rather be? That's what I wrote these yeah. as. <laughs> Snakes and <laughs> bugs and spiders and critters and nah, – yeah. no, no. no. I'd rather have some rain. <laughs> And maybe, yeah, and maybe get bit by a snake or a bug where it's, like, infecting you and you can't do anything and there's no one to pee on it for you. I mean, I don't know. Do what? you pee for <laughs> – <laughs> well, you know, jellyfish and then, you know, they supposedly <laughs> have to, you know, yeah, yeah, pee yeah. on it for you. But that doesn't happen with snakes and all that stuff. But, or suck out the venom. Like, I never understood that. You're sucking out the venom of somebody and then you're putting it in your body? No, you, you, you spit it. You, you suck it and spit. But right. yeah, it's yeah. Still in your, I don't your want somebody system. else's bloody venom in my Yeah, mouth. yeah, no. Yeah. Or those giant spiders. Actually, I think the tinier smi spiders are scarier because they're they're more. Um, you can't see them coming, and their bite is usually deadlier. But um, but yeah, like some kind of insect that you know, and you're like, I don't know what to do, you know, and you're out there, and how many days, and how long does the venom take, and ah. <laughs> I, I had like wild leeches on me as a kid, and it was nasty, it was nasty. So no, do not do not ever want to be in a situation where that happens again. How did you get leeches on you? My dad had a pond on the property oh. and we used to go swimming back there. And I mean, it was, you know, basically wild water. There were snapping turtles and fish and stuff. Mm -hmm. But and then at one point there were leeches in the water. And so then there that were leeches on me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like, you know, that's just nasty. Not going to do that anymore. <laughs> Don't to, to need to get cool that, that badly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. There is a bathtub. <laughs> yep. uh, the kitty waiting pool set looked pretty good after that. So, uh, yeah, I bet. Um, it, it's so strange to me to think that they used to have leeches to, to like, you know, leech people. It's like By to dry out the blood or whatever. I'm like, yeah. so weird. And the science yeah. behind all that, like. When did it seem like a good idea? Maybe there is science behind it. I don't know. Maybe if you're in the middle of the jungle and you get bit by a snake or whatever, and the only choice you have is to die or have a leech on you, I don't know. What would you do? Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be in that. I don't want to go near there. I don't want to fly over it. I don't want to be in a boat going by it. <laughs> <laughs> There's too many chances of accidents there. <laughs> you know, um, last time we went to New Orleans, my husband had a friend, uh, former bandmate who lived there, and he said, "Let me take you out to the bayou, and I'll give you a little bayou tour." And and so we went out there, and um, he turned to my daughter, and he's like, "Don't touch anything. Don't touch." leaves don't touch caterpillars don't touch beetles don't touch anything because you never know what's going to be poisonous right and i was like ah oh, this is the whole like tropical experience <laughs> i mean that was before we saw any alligators you know we're just like don't pet any caterpillars because they're likely to be poisonous yeah. and, okay that's good to know going in <laughs> yeah but, thanks for the warnings yeah, you know, it will be me who touches the pit cat. I know. Well, I wouldn't touch bugs. No, little thing. Go, hey. Yeah. <laughs> not yeah. knowing it was a caterpillar, not knowing it was like <laughs> face. Yeah, <exactly. laughs> oh, uh, what a pretty caterpillar! <laughs> yep. Oh, oh my god, that's hilarious. Well, okay, so this is the horror writers. HorrorWriter.net. What the hell is my problem? Howcon. I'm just going to say Howcon. Oh, yeah. um, and because <laughs> I can't say the whole long thing. Um, but so we're talking about writers this week. And um, so do you have any actual like 
advice? What is your biggest piece of advice for writers coming up? Don't get frustrated and give up because it, it, it takes a long time to like hone your craft. Uh, and I, I think that's fun for me. It's really fun to like take an idea and like form it and make it beautiful and then infect other people with it. I mean, that's the whole goal, right? Is to get my stories to live in other people's heads. And so, um, don't, don't set yourself some arbitrary deadline that I'm going to be famous by the time I'm 30 or, you know, whatever, because why, you know, it, I keep meeting people who are just talking about writing is so hard and it's so lonely and it's so much work and blah, blah, blah. But you know, you, you're so lucky to get to do it, yeah. you know, to make things up and tell stories and, and it's really fun. And if, the way you're writing isn't fun for you, then you need to find a different way to do it. So it is fun because man, making up stories is the best. Yeah. It is the absolute really is. best. Yeah. yeah. So, so don't, I don't know, don't decide things. Just go along with for the ride and, you know, get better. Every story gets better than the last one. Yeah. Um, don't give I up. I think that's really, advice I wish I knew that when I was starting out you know like I mean I didn't really know I wanted to be a writer until my 20s even though I had been writing stories since I was young but <laughs> I was like yeah it's just something I do you know <laughs> it's like one of those things because you know I was going to be a singer that was what I was going to be no one was going to stop me <laughs> you know, that, that was it but um, when I actually decided, oh, I, I actually do want to become a writer, I did have all those expectations on my head. Okay, well, I'm not going to be this, so I need to be this, and I need to be the best thing that I can be in exactly. this. And writing is, yes, there are people who have the talent for it. But at the same time, even the people with talent have to work on it and get better. And I'm sure you would agree my very first novel is not up to my standards today. Right. But it's on the road that I got to here by the road I got here on yeah. or something like that. <laughs> I need to edit that. Sentence. Well, Sorry. You're a writer. <laughs> Sorry, Lauren. Okay. The road I got here on. Yeah. Um, and so try not to be so critical of your first stages. Um, and you know, even if you are critical of yourself, take a step back and be like, you know what? Yeah, but I can do better. Well, um, yeah, my next nobody, book is going to be better. Nobody gets it right the first time. You right. Know? No, nobody writes a right. brilliant first draft. Right. That's too much pressure. You know, right. you just, you need to capture the idea and like form it into words and, and put it onto the paper and then you can like buff it up and make it pretty. But, you know, don't put all, I know people, I, I wrote with a guy for a while that, Every word had to be perfect before he could go on. And writing for him was excruciating. And he wrote these beautiful gem-like stories, but it was like slow suicide for him. It was so hard. And, and now he doesn't write anymore. And I, you know, I think that's criminal on so yes, many levels. Totally but I could never convince him to just like slap the words down, you know, fix it in revision. <laughs> right. So, yeah. Yeah, I think that's 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 a good point. And and another good point along with that is like yeah, you might have this great ideal and you're trying to make this story the best it can be, but at one at some point you got to let that go. It may not be perfect. Let it go. Now that you've learned, start your story somewhere else. Start it with new characters, start it with a new voice, a new POV, something and go with that. Cause you're never going to grow if you just keep concentrating right. on that same novel. This is right. the novel that's going to get published. And every time the publishers turn me down, I'm going to rework it. Like that does nothing. Put that in the trunk, Bubba. Uh, yeah. Bubba. I don't know who I'm talking about. Hey, Bubba, <laughs> put that in the trunk. <laughs> Bubba. Uh, but Bubba, get on with your other next story. And, yeah. you know, create something new and something more exciting and something more you. And then let that one go too. I mean, there is, you know, you do need to sharpen up stuff before you send it out, but there is such a thing as like working a story to death. 
Yeah. And so then all of a sudden you're like, this doesn't even make sense anymore. Like, you well, know. The thing is, uh, you know, as I was coming up, I would work, workshop the same stories every time I went to another workshop. I'd like drag out the same thing. And, you know, you get too many cooks in there, you know, too many fingers. And yes. people are telling you competing things and they like different parts of it and don't you know the same you get two people and they'll disagree totally about what the story is about and where its value is and you know at some point it's your work and you're like the final arbiter and it has to make you happy and if you're happy with it then send it out you know keep sending it out i've had stories that have gone out that have been rejected like 20 25 times but they find homes eventually yeah and and then the people that read them love them. And so it's just, you know, a matter of keep, keep things going. Keep it yeah. going. No, yeah. And, um, and and don't work it so hard that it's like, a, you know, second grade English assignment where you have to use all the vocabulary right. words. You know, <laughs> it needs to make sense. And if you use too many words that are taxing people's brains, I've read them when they came into horatics.net press. It's like, okay, this is totally reworked uh, over and over again. And the beginning is like difficult to get through. And then I get to the middle and the end. I'm like, this is a really good idea. Why did they mess the front up so bad? Yeah. You know, <laughs> like hack mm -hmm. that first page off, mm -hmm. repackage it, you know. So that was, that was something we saw with Mormon Curiosity all the time is like, you know, people would have like three paragraphs of getting ready to tell the story. You know, yeah. three paragraphs of everything you need to know to get to the story I'm going to tell right. you today. <laughs> no, throw all that crap out and just start where the story starts. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. That's one of the things that made me like short stories. I used to hate them because I'm more of a novel. Well, now I think I'm more of a short story writer, but um, in my brain works more on a novel level. Like I want to tell this big story that's going to take pages. Uh, but when I, re someone told me, because I was writing short stories and they were just not working. There was like no point to them. <laughs> like little vignettes of people's lives like what was going on here um and someone told me the short story is one you know speck of an idea so don't put in all the preamble and don't put in mm -hmm. all the end part you just take the one speck and the closer you can start to the action that's that's the best so as soon as i realize it's just a little little idea like a one day in your life totally changed everything because you want to make that one day as po as cool and interesting and exciting as possible and then you've got an actual tale that people want to read shortly mm -hmm. read shortly I don't know if that's right but <laughs> <laughs> they want to read short shorts shortly mm -hmm. <laughs> see all the wisdom i'm cranking out here bubba oh, right. now now things are like going the other way I got a call the other day for, they wanted a 300 word short story and 300 words is just like a paragraph. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, I, wow. I can't get character and dialogue and description and action and, right. and a plot in 300 right. words. You know, I could pick one of those things. You could have, you know, all the description you need for 300 words, but wow. I you know. I, I, I don't even like to read stories that short because by the time I've gotten attached to the character, it's God. the story's over. So, yeah. yeah. So one thing that, um, what's his name? Uh, I forget what his name is, but it, he, he goes under crap in SL. <laughs> his name is crap. Anyway. Um, he writes these hundred word stories. I don't even know if he's around anymore. I need to look him up. Anyway, he told me one time the re the key to writing hundred word stories is to pick things that people already know. So Abraham Lincoln and the Easter Bunny go into a bar, you know, <laughs> it's like things like that, where it's like, you don't have to describe anybody. As soon as I see, a say, Abraham Lincoln, you know, you got the vision in your head, the beards, the hat, you know, you know, the whole surrounding. Mm -hmm. As soon as I see the, say, the Easter Bunny, now it may be up to your description of the Easter Bunny, it might be cute and sweet, or it might be those scary guys. Um, but anyway, you know exactly, and I've just said two yeah. names. So it's like <laughs> those short stories are really hard for that. But I also find 
if you're using like Abraham Lincoln and stuff, it gets a little cheesy. So um, 100 word stories, yeah, you absolutely need that. 300 word stories, maybe you don't have to say her name. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Maybe you let the person who's reading it decide who she is, what she is, what she looks like. Yeah. Maybe you're just seeing it from her point of view or something. But yeah, but see, that's, that's, I guess that's me because the part of writing a story that I find interesting is creating a visual uh -huh. so that, uh -huh. you know, you and I see the same thing. I think that's really right. cool. So right. I mean, that's tough. That's yeah. tough. What are you yeah. going to do? <laughs> You know, you're like that. I'm just gonna pass on that one. Let that one go. <laughs> swipe yeah, right. Exactly. Wait, swipe right. I don't know. I don't know. I don't do that app, stuff. So I don't know. Swipe whichever way is bad. Yeah. <laughs> Which way is that? <laughs> All right. Well, well, it looks like we only have five minutes. We talked the oh, whole time. I'm I know. Very excited that really about quick. that. <laughs> I yeah. thought we were gonna have lulls. <laughs> Oh, you don't know us very well, do you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I know. I know when we're together alone, you know, we uh, have tons to yeah. talk about and could go on for hours. But <laughs> with an uh, with a possible audience, because we don't know if this worked or not. This is the first time we're doing live uh, chat in a room. So <laughs> we'll, I guess we'll see. Yeah. I get to see all those weird faces I make and hate myself and be like, okay, next yeah. time you need to sit still and yeah. smile. Or have it set up. <laughs> I never sit up. Right, exactly. <laughs> like well, lounging back here. <laughs> right, exactly. Hey. Yep. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lauren, for being here. I think it'll probably cut off, but I we might end right here oh. because it's the perfect ending. Is there anything last second you want to say? Oh, do you want to pimp something? Uh, real quick. Yeah. If if People are interested in my collection of short stories. It's called Unsafe Words, and it's pretty much um, a good variety of everything I write, from science fiction to fantasy to horror, and kind of all woven together in between. So, yes, awesome. Unsafe Words. It's available pretty much anywhere that sells books. Yes, check it out. And if for some reason we're able to see this after we recorded it, and if for some reason there is a comment box, we will put the link of NC uh -huh. in the comment box, right? Yes. I guess. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for coming, Lauren. Thank Bye. you so much for having me. <laughs> if I could turn, turn this off. <laughs>